Hi everyone, this is Rob Roy and welcome to the Elliott Wave Elite U.S. Market Update. Yeah, slight name change uh, this week uh, from now moving forward. We had abbreviated it. It's a bit of a mouthful to say, but uh, I think um, it's important that we uh, call Elliott Wave by its uh, proper name. Those of you that have been with us over the last number of months have seen the uh, um, amazing uh, results that Elliott Wave has had as far as forecasting, specifically the U.S. market. And um, hopefully that's gotten you both intrigued and excited about the predictive power of Elliott Wave. So with that said, let's get to the charts. Just wanted to give you a quick explanation of the name change. Uh, remember the last uh, video that we did, we had the uh, zigzag being complete with the market going right up to that 100% extension. And then uh, we had the jobs report uh, last Friday and the jobs report came in and it was a little bit disappointing mm -hmm. Uh, because it was about 50,000 uh, jobs less than what was expected. And initially it looked like that might be a bit of a negative, but then when you look back, there was two previous revisions. That's one thing that's crazy about uh, the economic reports in the U.S. is they revise them several times. So the first number that comes out is never the way it ends. Uh, it's frustrating, but uh, anyway, so they uh, revised the previous two months up, so it kind of made up for what was uh, missing out of the jobs report so it was viewed as a good thing so we had the market moving to the upside and then on this past Friday we had this uh, big drop I'm sure you're aware of uh, the news about the uh, Turkish uh, lira and uh, the uh, um, basically it's getting close to uh, crashing things are uh, pretty rough over in Turkey and then um, President Trump doubled up on the tariffs and some people may have think that was piling on, but actually he's using it as leverage because they're they're holding a, uh, a U.S. priest over there and he's trying to help negotiate his release. Anyway, so where are we with the markets now? Well, we already completed that 100% extension, as you know, so uh, in order for this zigzag to go to the next extension, the 161.8 extension, which... Do you happen to notice that that's exactly where that wave five is in the overall larger pattern? That's pretty interesting, isn't it? It's always good when you have multiple uh, Elliott wave patterns giving you the same predictive uh, price range. However, for that to occur, because you know we have this wave four uh, down here that has to happen at some point before we hit that wave five target. Same thing with the zigzag is before you move to a next fib extension, you are supposed to test a previous extension that's how it normally works so but basically what I'm trying to share with you is that both the zigzag within this powerful wave 3 as well as the larger wave 5 uh, directional pattern are both uh, showing that at some point in the not too distant future we need to have a pullback and it just so happens that all this is occurring right as we are very near the previous highs so we're going through a testing period, obviously, of the previous highs. We've talked about this before. Testing can be done um, one of three different ways. One is that you break the previous high, and then you fall back down. Another one is you stop just short, which is where we are right now. And the uh, third way is, obviously, you go to exactly to the same point, and, uh, and then you back off, and then you figure out where things are going to go from there. And that's exactly what's going to happen here is that... Uh, We'll go through this testing process. We will likely have this wave four correction at some point in time. Um, does it mean, remember, uh, the four there does not mean that we are in the wave four. It's a common mistake. I like to continuously point that out. What that means is that if the wave four starts now, that's the likely uh, correction point. So very important. Uh, to keep that in mind. Looking at the SPY so that we can bring volume into the mix, you can see that, uh, and this is also uh, pretty important, when we had this move up following the uh, jobs report, and you might think, well, okay, so you had a disappointing jobs report, but then you made up for it with the revisions. Why was that a catalyst to move the market higher? Well, who's the big elephant in the room? The Federal Reserve, and uh, the fact that they're embarking now on raising rates. And even though it's a slow process, it doesn't matter what's going on economically. If you withdraw liquidity, you are going to get a correction. That's just it's how it works. If liquidity is coming out, the markets uh, head to the downside due to that. It's only a matter of time before that occurs. That's, that's one of the main reasons why we don't really 
look at fundamentals too much other than as a base. We want good fundamentally sound stocks, but our primary uh, forecasting tools are technical. And as you know, Elliott Wave is by far the best of those. Looking at this move to the downside here in volume, it coincided with that upward move. That's never a good thing. That's a divergence you don't want to see if you're bullish or along the market. You don't want to see the market moving up while volume is falling to the downside. Uh, and then we had uh, a spike in volume on Friday uh, with the down uh, move with the news out of Turkey, etc. But that really didn't even break the uh, average volume, the 200-day moving average. So it wasn't like it was huge volume selling. So we'll see how things play out as that testing process continues. Looking at the VIX, pretty interesting chart here. We had broken this 12 level, which as you know from watching these uh, recordings, that that had uh, become support uh, when it was resistance for a long time. It uh, became support and we broke below it uh, during the week, but then on Friday blasted back above it. Now Monday is going to be very important to see if, if we hold above there, because remember it takes two days. So if we break above it here, we need to hold that a second day. If so, then looks like uh, volatility is returning to the markets. Looking at the dollar, pretty impressive move on Friday out of the U.S. dollar. Very classic pattern. We've talked about this. Uh, we've been talking about the dollar for, uh, for months, going all the way back here to the beginning of the year uh, before even the Wave 3 rent, uh, run occurred. And so the U.S. dollar is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Went through some consolidation uh, in this wave five, and now the extension is occurring. So that's working like clockwork. Now what's really interesting here is interest rates. Interest rates are going down. And you might be thinking, well, I thought you just said the Federal Reserve is raising rates. Well, they are. Uh, but more money is moving into the bond market right now. And that coincides uh, with the fact that the S&P 500 moved to the downside uh, on Friday. So that actually matches with the fact that money moved into the bond market, uh, kept coming out of the equities market. It was Friday. There was some unknowns about, you know, if there was worse news to come out over Turkey or any other geopolitical news. So it might have been just a hiding place. Money, money might have just been hiding in the bond market over the weekend. Monday's going to be a very, very in interesting day in the markets uh, is really the gist of this. Uh, looking at uh, UNP, just wanted to show you this uh, uh, update here. Still staying in the wave three and uh, moving sideways following that uh, nice wave three move. Uh, Express Scripts, we talked about how we were going to uh, pair back on some of these uh, older case studies that uh, have done their thing, but there was a big move here in this Wave 3 in Express Scripts, and that might be tempting uh, to try and put on a new position and continue on with this, but uh, just a word of caution, they're involved in uh, merger acquisition talks, and that's one of the things that I stay away from. Uh, even with the amazing technical predictive power of, uh, of LA Wave, still uh, that's just one of those things that can, uh, can throw things off. Remember, no matter how good LA Wave is, it's not 100% accurate, even though it seems like it with the results that we've been getting, it's not 100% accurate, and uh, um, nothing is 100% accurate. So this is one of those things that could cause a wave count to, uh, to be off is a merger acquisition because it could fall through. Um, you know, just have to wait and, and see um, what happens there. But I think it best just to, to leave that one alone. Uh, ULTA is testing the wave four at this point. If it breaks the wave four, then we would close out our bullish butterfly. And that could happen if the market does uh, begin to weaken. It's held in there pretty well, uh, testing a previous wave four is never anything unusual. If it does break the wave four, we'll close out that um, uh, long call butterfly, as I mentioned, and that will be uh, newsworthy because out of all the months that we've been doing these and sharing case studies, that would be our first loser. Uh, but uh, it's been one heck of a run if that happens. It hasn't happened yet so far as just testing it, but if it does, then uh, it will have the, the distinction of being the first losing one we put out. At least, uh, at least we know that uh, uh, LA Wave and, and we are human. Some things to uh, mention here, 
when we get into a market like this, I wanted to share with you some of the things that look at when, uh, when we get a little bit of uh, uh, confusion in the markets on whether or not we're going to start the wave four, is the wave three over, a little bit of a question mark, Elliott Wave will tell us when it occurs. Uh, here is one of the uh, triangles that we issued an alert here in the U.S. Uh, recently. Uh, look how big this triangle is. Talk about a really nice consolidating triangle. Uh, that was the pattern when we uh, when we sent out the alert and entered a, uh, a strangle. Very unique way of doing strangles to take advantage of these LA wave corrective triangles. Well it broke to the downside and it looked like that was going to be the big move and lo and behold it turned around and flew back to the upside. And a very important um, learning uh, point here, uh, educational point I should say, is the fact that when you do one of these strangles, the temptation when you get a breakout is to take one of the legs off. But you don't want to take one of the legs off until uh, that pattern has solidified itself and done what it's supposed to do. In other words, the downside breakout looked nice, but it didn't reach the target for the breakout. The move to the upside did. So you can take the calls off because this was a huge profit, 240% gain uh, on this, on this uh, uh, alert that was sent out. 240% on one uh, alert issued. That's pretty darn good. So um, then you can take the calls off and if we get a retracement, which quite often happens, then the puts may regain value, they may expire worthless, but who cares? The gain was made off the calls. So just wanted to share with you some things that I look at uh, when we start to get into uh, um, some question on where the market goes from here. Here's one to take a look at. I think this is about as classic as it gets. You can see that we had a wave five that finished. This is on a search that I've created in Integrated Investor. It's an Elliott Wave search for corrective triangles. Uh, again, using um, the uh, tools within both profit source and integrated investor that allows you to do this, which is um, just makes trading so much easier. But we finish the wave five. What happens then? You work your way back to the wave four normally. Uh, but what happens before that is you go through a little bit of a correction, consolidation, and there it is. Look at that triangle. It's beautiful. Nice symmetrical triangle in the wave, uh, uh, the pullback following the wave five. So that's about as classic as it gets. So that's one that uh, uh, we will be issuing a, uh, a strangle alert on uh, tomorrow. And so this uh, here in the U.S. should say so it can break out to the upside or the downside and we simply don't care. Looking at uh, directional, don't, we don't care which direction it breaks. We care that it breaks, just not which direction. No, we just wanted to clear that up. Uh, a couple of uh, Elliott Wave um, directional positions, if you're interested, that came out on the search. Boy, there wasn't a lot on the bullish search, uh, but um, there's a uh, Wave uh, uh, buy here where we finished the Wave 5 on the way down, and so we have the reversal and the, the move back from the conclusion of the wave five back up and so where's the target you know it's the previous four so we're up in here and again a really good thing to do would be to put an out of the money very inexpensive low risk low cost out of the money butterfly and see if uh, if we return to that point if we do then uh, that'll be a, a, a very nice nicely profitable position one other one to look at a completely different pattern rather than uh, uh, the conclusion of a downward wave five heading back to the upside. Lulu, on a day when the market had a very rough day, powered to the upside, up $2.36, and there was average volume behind the move. Again, unusual considering the fact that it was bucking the trend in the market, and it's in a very strong wave three. We had a gap up on earnings, consolidation, and then moving back to the upside. Uh, again, on, uh, on earnings and so um, we may get a continuation of the wave three there. I would like to see the second day of breaking that because that's a big long consolidation following the gap up in the wave three and remember how many days do we need? Two, right? So just the break 
uh, up on Friday is meaningless. We need the follow through day. If we do get a follow through day and we break above that 130 level, then it's very likely that uh, volume will come piling back into that uh, position. And if we look at uh, money flow, you can see that money flow is beginning to build back to the upside as well. Um, so really cool that uh, private source and integrated investor have the check in money flow. It's a really, really good indicator as a confirming indicator for whatever uh, Elliott Wave systems that, uh, that you want to bid, uh, build. So that wraps things up to a rather long, rather long uh, video for this week. Hope you've had a wonderful weekend, and we'll be back to talk to you again next week. Take care, everybody.